How scared should we be of new variants of the COVID-19 virus? So the three questions to ask about these variants are, are they more transmissible? Are they more virulent? In other words, do they cause more disease and death? And are they able to evade um, vaccine-induced or naturally acquired immunity? So the way to think about a variant is that every virus has its own wardrobe and the items of clothing in this wardrobe are the bits and pieces that our immune systems recognise. Within this wardrobe, the virus will have, you know, five different shirts, five or six different pairs of trousers, a change of socks. And from this often quite limited variability, it has to cobble together an outfit. So, so when a new variant emerges, essentially it's just picked a different outfit from the same wardrobe. Overall, it is still the same virus most of the time, and certainly in the case of the COVID variants that are currently circulating, most of the outfit um, is shared between the circulating variants. And our immune systems are likely to recognise it. It's very unlikely that a new variant would actually drive a new wave. The waves occur because of other reasons, typically, such as changes in the season. Seasons appear to have a very significant impact on the growth of um, the epidemic. We don't know precisely why. It's, it's something we observe for almost all respiratory pathogens. That is what drives an increase in cases, rather than the variant itself. And in that wave, you will get quite a strong competition between the variants and typically a single variant will win out. That variant doesn't have to be very much more transmissible than the other variants in the same way that in a football match, Real Madrid playing Barcelona, one of them will win and it's not because one team is vastly um, more able than the other team. They win either because they played a little bit better on that day or sometimes just by chance. And that's what's much more likely to explain why we've seen certain variants dominating. It's because they're just a little bit better at transmitting from person to person. So is it possible that any of these new variants will cause more disease and death. At the moment, there isn't much of an indication that they do, but it is possible that they might be slightly more virulent, but it's very, very unlikely that they will be super virulent and much more virulent than the current strains. So it's very unlikely that any of these new variants is going to emerge from the wardrobe dressed as um, Superman or Batman. They might be wearing a different hat, different coloured hat or a different pair of socks, but it's very unlikely they're going to have undergone a complete outfit change and come out dressed as Superman. And in any case, uh, the vaccine or indeed naturally acquired immunity will give us sufficient protection from disease, severe disease and death. And this has been shown repeatedly with the vaccines. In the future, um, COVID will settle into a seasonal pattern like the other coronaviruses and may be uh, dominated by a single variant uh, if the virus can find its sort of optimal outfit, um, or may support a range of similar variants, um, or might toggle between different variants. Uh, we don't know yet. But whatever happens, the vaccines that we have
and indeed natural exposure itself, uh, should provide enough protection to keep us from dying of COVID-19.